Hello and welcome to the Chapter 7 Summary Worksheet from Stevens' Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. Here we're just going to go over some problems from Chapter 7 and it is worth noting that these solutions as you see here are actually printed in the back of your book so if we're moving along too quickly you can always check back there. Alright, so let's take a look at this first problem. We're considering the amount of coke in cans labeled as containing 12 ounces. All right. We'll assume the actual amount of coke in such a can is a normally distributed variable. All right. And suppose you randomly select 25 cans and find the mean from that sample is 11.85 and the standard deviation is 0.3. So I have that n equals 25, that's my sample size. The sample mean is 11.85 and the standard deviation is 0.3. Right. So for part A, the first question, or request I guess, is construct a 95% confidence interval estimate for the mean amount of coke in all such cans. Right. And, and the, big, the biggest mistake that students make on this particular problem is they, they go right to chapter 7.2. They think, oh, this is a 7.2 problem. But that's actually not true. This is a 7.4 problem. And the reason is the population standard deviation is unknown. Sigma is unknown, right? Remember, you only know the, the population standard deviation under special circumstances and, and you'll see a line that says the population standard deviation that wasn't in here it just said we had a sample with a mean of this and a standard deviation so we actually have the sample standard deviation not the population so sigma is unknown so the big thing about 7.4 is that we use the t-table instead of the z-table and the formula for the margin of error in calculating our confidence interval this. It looks similar to the one that we have whenever we use um, the z-table, but there's a t in there, and there's an s instead of a sigma. Alright, so now we just have to find the critical um, t value, and that's not so bad. We have n is 25, uh, so that means my degrees of freedom is 24, right? So 24. In fact, I'll put all the information down here. So we have x bar is 11.85. The sample standard deviation is 0.3. N is 25. And the degrees of freedom, 24. It's always one less than the sample size. And this is a 95% confidence interval. So really, all I need is the 95% confidence level and my degrees of freedom. And I have to go to my t-table, which is right here. Actually, it's after the z-tables. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go to full screen mode just to um, get a little more room in here. Okay, so here we are, the degrees of freedom. So what well, we were 95% was our confidence level. So we're in this middle column. And the degrees of freedom was 24. So our critical value is at the intersection of this row and this column, so 2.064. So we'll go back to uh, the worksheet. Better get that into full screen mode. Okay. There, now we have a little bit more room to work with. Uh, so 2.064, my critical value. There's S, the sample standard deviation, and the sample size. I get a margin of error, 0.1238. And as with every confidence interval in this chapter, we take the sample variable, the sample mean in this case, subtract a margin of error to get the lower limit, take the sample mean, add a margin of error to get the upper limit, and the lower limit and upper limit create the confidence interval. All right. And I put a mu in there to designate that my unknown population mean is between those two values, and I'm 95% confident of that. The second little question here, all right, 
I don't want to forget about that. Are you 95% confident that the mean amount of all Coke cans is less than 12 ounces? Because look, the can says 12 ounces, and your 95% confidence interval is 11.73 to 11.97, specifically below 12. Uh, so yes, since that upper bound is below 12, um, you are 95% confident the true mean is below 12 ounces. Now suppose I want to make a 99% confidence interval and then ask the same question um, at the 99 percent confidence level. Um, so the problem remains exactly the same. The only difference is that my critical value of T changes. Basically I go back to my T table and now instead of being at the 95 percent confidence level I'm at the 99. Alright, so I'm in this first column. And my critical value goes to 2.797. So let's go back there. So that's where this 2.797 came from. So what that means is that now we have a margin of error that's a little bigger because my confidence level went up. Sample mean minus the margin of error gives me my lower bound. Sample mean plus the margin of error gives my upper bound. And my confidence interval is 11.68 to 12.02. Now I ask the same question up here. Are you 99% confident the mean amount of Coke in all cans is less than 12 ounces? Because this upper bound, 12.02, is actually bigger than 12, it's possible that the population mean is in that interval and, um, is not less than 12 ounces. So since the upper bound is above 12, I can't be or you can't be 99% confident that the true mean is below 12 ounces. It could be 12.01 or 12.0. Right? Okay, so now assume and notice some, all of a sudden here I'm back to chapter 7.2 because I somehow know the population standard deviation is point 0.2. So sigma is suddenly known. So that allows me to use the z-table and the margin of error is given by this formula. Right. So construct the 95% confidence interval. Well, that's one of my um, popular confidence levels. So I go to my z-table. Let me, let me put this here, z-table. Okay, and again, this is pretty nice. It's one of the popular levels. 0.95, my critical value is 1.96, which we see a lot. So that's where this 1.96 comes from. That is now the population standard deviation going in the same place that the sample standard deviation used to be and the sample size underneath the square root. So now we get a margin of error of 0 0.0784. Take the sample mean, subtract the margin of error, get the lower bound, sample mean plus the margin of error, get the upper bound, and my confidence interval is 11.77 to 11.93. Okay. And part D, continue to assume to assume that you know the population standard deviation, so sigma is known. What size sample would be required to be 95% confident that the sample mean is within 0.05 ounces of the true population mean? And this is still from 7.2, but it's a sample size question. And if you go back to 7.2, you'll notice we have um, let me get that here. Oh, wait. Let me get it full screen. There you go. We have this. That's the formula for um, a necessary sample size given a maximum tolerance and a margin of error. Right. So I rewrote that. That's, on, that's back here. So that's this formula right here. Right. And in this case, now let's see, I need Z sub alpha over. So I need the critical value of Z, but again at the 95% confidence level, that was 1.96. We found that in the last problem. 
So sigma is given to be 0 0.2. And the maximum margin of error we are willing to tolerate is 0 0.05. So when you take these three values, stick it into that formula, it's 61.5. And again, we always round up. So you need to sample at least 62 cans of soda. So that's sort of all the variations on a confidence interval about a, a mean. The next problem asks you a confidence interval about a proportion. Right. And that is chapter 7.3. Right. So here we go. A travel agent wants to estimate the proportion of vacationers who plan to travel outside of the United States in the next 12 months. A random sample of 150 vacationers revealed that 45 had plans for foreign travel in that time. Right? So I want to construct the 95% confidence interval estimate for the population proportion. And from chapter 7.3, the margin of error looks like this. But I need p hat and z sub alpha over 2 and, and n. So let's work on p hat. P hat, in this case, is the number of successes over the number of trials, or it's the sample proportion of vacationers who plan to travel outside of the country in the next 12 months. So it's really just 45 over 150, which is 0.3. That makes Q hat 0.7. My sample size is the 150 vacationers. And um, my critical value of Z, this is the 95% confidence level. So again, the popular confidence level and a popular critical value, 1.96 again. All right. So that's my critical value right there. P hat, Q hat, N. So my margin of error, 0 0.073365. I keep a lot of extra decimals around um, and then I'll round to the appropriate three significant digits at the very end. Okay, so to get my actual confidence interval, I need my lower limit, so I take my sample proportion, p hat, minus the margin of error, I get 0.227. For the upper limit, I take p hat plus the margin of error, gives me 0.373, so my 95% confidence interval 0.227 is less than P is less than 0.373. So I'm 95% confident that the proportion of all vacationers planning to travel outside of the U.S. In, over the next 12 months is between, say, like 23 and 37%. Right? Okay. Now we're going to do, um, let's see, this is a sample size problem. Suppose at the 95% confidence level, you need to have a margin of error no more than four percentage points. How many vacationers would you have to sample? And in this case, use the sample proportion you calculated in part A as an estimate of p hat. So specifically, we're going to say, all right, p hat is 0.3. Now, if you go back to, and again, this is chapter 7.3. If you go back to chapter 7.3, you'll see that there's two formulas. This is p hat known, this is p hat unknown. Since I know p hat, I'll use this one, 7.6. All right, so um, there's that formula right there. I have p hat. Q hat is 0.7. The maximum tolerated margin of error, this E down here, is given right here. Four percentage points. So E equals 0.04. E equals 0.04. Remember to change the 4% to a 0.04 decimal. Otherwise, your answer will be way off. And then my critical value at the 95% confidence level will once again be 1.96 from the Z table. There's P hat, Q hat, E. Plug it all in, I get 504.21. Again, we always round up because we need at least 504.21 in our sample. That means we need 
at least 505 people. All right. Now, we're looking at the same confidence level. You need to have a margin of error no more than four percentage points again. So again, E equals 0.04. But in this case, you have no estimate of P hat. So what that means is we have to use that second formula from chapter 7.3. When P hat is not known, I'm going to use this one. And all that does is change the P hat times Q hat here into a 0.25. So we'll go back to the worksheet here. There's that formula. Again, at the 95% confidence level, the critical value is 1.96, found from the Z table. 0.25 replaces P hat times Q hat. There's my max margin of error. And when you do that, you get 600.25. Got a little bit bigger because I didn't know P hat or Q hat. Uh, so, and again, rounding up. You'll need at least 601 people in your sample. I believe that wraps us up for Chapter 7. So um, I will catch up with you come Chapter 8. Thanks. See you later.